G'day, today I'm travelling on a Cathay Pacific Boeing 777 with a secret first class cabin that's not sold as first class. How does that work? Now Cathay has numerous seating layouts in its 777-300ER fleet. This is the 77G and I flew this configuration from Perth to Hong Kong two weeks ago. You might have watched that video. The actual aircraft I flew on was BKQZ. That was an eight and a half year old plane with 40 business seats and no first. But have a look at the 77H and the 77A. See here? These two rows are first class seats. Now I'm on one of those aircraft today, BKQG, but I couldn't buy any of those first class seats. Cathay just doesn't offer first for sale on that sector. However, passengers do end up in these plush, roomy, comfy private seats. But first, how do you know if your Cathay flight has this secret first class cabin? Well, when you book a business class seat and you go to do your seat selection, look for these six seats in rows one and two. If you're booking a business class flight days and weeks out, these won't show up as selectable. So how does seat 1A differ from seat 12A? Well, good people, the difference between this first class cabin and the normal business class is chalk and cheese. It's such a big suite. And there are only six of them in this very private front cabin of this 777. Major differences, apart from the physical space that you get, much bigger screen. Big screen. The bed is much wider at the shoulders and at your feet. And unlike the other seats behind, where you put your feet effectively in a box, this is completely open. Storage, yes, a couple of little spots here to my right. My laptop can go down here. And there's a small wardrobe just behind here, but unfortunately, my camera bag, which normally fits into any locker, is too big for that, so it has to sit under the seat here. And another difference I've just discovered about this seat compared with the other seats behind me, you get Bose noise cancelling headsets here. Oh, and get this, coming up shortly, I'll be giving all the drivers a very valuable pack of gifts. And one of those gifts will be an amazing pair of Bose headphones worth around 400 US dollars. And if you have a luxury product you'd like to get into the hands of the F1 drivers who are super influencers, email kim at kimillman.com and let's chat about getting you involved in that promotion. When you fly Cathay first, you get offered pajamas. We don't today because this is a business flight. And there are only three seats across the plane, which is similar to Qantas in their first class but that's on the A380, so that's a much bigger plane. On the Emirates 777s, they have four suites across the plane, and the cabin is larger, housing eight seats. Now, on some Cathay sectors, they will sell these as first-class seats. They'll be priced higher than business by a mile. You'll get Cathay's full first-class food and drink service, and you'll be able to select them at the time of booking. But on today's flight, the people sitting here, and I'm lucky enough to be one of them, will be served the same food and beverages as in business. Now I wanted to secure one of these seats for obvious reasons. So for the past 14 days, I've run Cathay on and off to inquire about how I get one. For the most part, I encountered staff at call centers outside Hong Kong who were, well, to be frank, totally clueless about these seats. One expert from the Philippines told me they're selectable online 80 hours prior to departure. That was wrong. Another told me 48 hours, and two more told me 24 hours. All of them wrong. Another told me I had to ask at the airport. Take your pick, huh? It wasn't until I spoke to a supervisor, Josie, that I actually got to the bottom of the deal. She told me that first up, business class had to be full before they opened that first class cabin. And when they did, it was only for their frequent flyers, their diamond status members. Diamond members are Cathay's most valued frequent flyers. But if there are no more diamond members and still there are free seats, it opens up to other frequent flyers on the One World Network. And in that instance, I'm Emerald with Qantas. So apart from the much more lavish seat and the private area, is there anything else extra? No, it's not a first class service. It's a business class service, but in a much bigger seat. Now last year, Cathay actually offered to status match other airlines members, which meant I could have come straight in as a Diamond Cathay member. I chose not to do it. And in hindsight, I think I was probably a bit silly. I should have done it. Is it possible to get row one or two on this uh, flight? I can change uh, you, your seat to 2A. To, to Beautiful. And what about my wife, Tonya? You got your boarding pass? I have indeed. 
How many seats do you have left? Because we're a party of six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, the first cast song is full. Okay. But you, you, you made the book chat later. See any sure. last minute no show? Right. Thank you very yeah. much. You made our day. Thank you very much. Well, that is unbelievable. Two of the six first class seats in that cabin. And we've got, I think, eight hours and 15 minutes in well, luxury, isn't it? Now we're here in time for lunch, so I'm going to have Cantonese braised Australian Angus beef short rib. We've kicked off lunch with a glass of champagne. In fact, there's three on offer here. This one's an Ayala, but there's also two drapiers, one being a rosé. I started with a small serve of smoked salmon with some dressing on it. And now I've moved on to the Cantonese braised Australian Angus beef short rib. <laughs> Lovely sauce, great taste, well cooked and it was delivered very quickly, maybe three minutes after I'd ordered it. I'm going to give that a 7.6 out of 10. And who can enter this lounge? We're only diamond members. Now we aren't diamond Cathay members, but we do hold emerald status with One World. Now for editorial purposes, I also ordered the pasta, which was a carbonara, excellent buttery sauce, 8.1 out of 10, and a schnitzel, which was good, but not quite up to the standard of the past at 7.1 out of 10. And to top things off, a mango cheesecake, 7.9 out of 10. And how about this, if you've got a couple of hours to spare, these are free, cabanas. Bath, shower, pretty nice. There's also a nice bar out here with a good selection of spirits. And if you don't feel like sitting down and ordering, you can come out here, which is just outside with the beautiful view out over the plains. And there's a whole host of food here for you. Now, if you've been to one of these contactless stores before, you'll know how nifty they are, but I've never been, so I'm gonna give it a crack now. Okay, so I put my credit card through my phone. I'm approved, nice, gates open. I'm in here. There are no staff, except some shouting woman on the PA. Now I should buy something that I don't need. What should it be? Mm. Now what do I do? Do I just walk out? <laughs> that is phenomenal. That is the future of shopping. We've just made our way from the wing first class lounge to the pier first class lounge. It's quite a walk. And on the way, we stopped over at the overpass. This is something you definitely want to do when you're here at Hong Kong airport. I came from my left side here and it's gate number 23. I came up two escalators. This is my view from the top here. I just saw a beautiful Asiana plane go right underneath me. It was phenomenal. And when you go from this side to this side, you see the other side of the airport and it costs you nothing. The red light's not on, is it? No. Nope. It's good. <laughs> it looks funny. It's a lengthy walk to our plane, and as you can see on the top of my cap here, I have a new camera. This is a InstaGo 3. It's a pretty clever bit of kit. We send that clip to yeah. them and ask for sponsorship. <laughs> They're a perfect fit for the channel. I do. <laughs> I was happy when I got upgraded to this seat, delighted when Tonya got upgraded, and now I find that my son and his girlfriend are also here in this beautiful first class cabin. Pretty nice. Pretty lucky, aren't we? Hello. into the flight our lunch dinner came out I started with a chicken and jellyfish salad chicken was okay I'm not a fan of the jellyfish and then for main course it was lamb shoulder confit with spiced stew that was a mistake on my part I did not enjoy that but I did enjoy the cheeses I had some ice cream some fruit to top that off with a couple of pralines now and drink wise I did try one of the white wines a Framingham Sauvignon Blanc from the Marlborough region in New Zealand. As you know, I'm no wine critic, but it was pleasing to the palate. So we're three hours into this flight now, and I've finished eating. 
and I've had uh, one of the cabin crew make up the bed and I've just realised that we've got first class linen so the mattress is much thicker than what I would have got back in the other seat the pillow is absolutely huge and this doona is just gorgeous it's so light and yet so warm so I imagine a couple of you are probably wondering what is the value of that seat upgrade it's a little hard to tell, but to give you an idea, a Hong Kong to London flight in business is around 40,000 Hong Kong dollars. First class, 70,000. That's a $30,000 difference. That's about US $3,800. But Perth is a shorter flight, so pro rata, let's say the difference is around $2,000. But of course, you're not getting the top tier food and beverage service, so maybe the value of that much more lavish meal with very expensive alcohol would be and I'm guessing say $300. That would mean that the value of that upgrade is in the order of about 1,700 US dollars. And that's a pretty good deal, huh? Well, my friends, uh, seven hours into an eight hour 15 flight and our second meal has just come out. I've opted for the Reuben sandwich and it's big, crunchy on top, but very oily underneath. Oh, I fear that is very, very fatty, but tasty. Oh, and about 20 minutes before the end of the flight, I inadvertently leant on this and realized that there is a massaging mechanism in the seat. So how did I, along with my wife, my son and his girlfriend, all get this magnificent, essentially an upgrade to a first class suite? We simply asked. Well, that was one of the best flights I've taken in a long time, especially knowing that uh, effectively I had first class for the price of business. And in my next travel video, when I'm off to Bahrain for the round one of the F1 season, I'll be showing you how to travel first class with Emirates for less than the price of an economy seat on the same airline. Well, it's great to be back home in Perth, albeit for two nights, then it's off to Bahrain for season start. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe, because about 50% of you are not subscribed. And here's a whole lot of stuff for you to check out. Thanks for watching, and stay passionate. Now, what about lounge access? Is that any...